Good morning, kiddos. Good morning. Azalea spent yesterday and the night with Country. We just brought her back so we can milk her. And I'm gonna do a blood test while she's in the milking stanchion to check to see if she's pregnant. While we have her in here, we got the test. I wanna make sure she wasn't already pregnant and then we'll know more of a date of when she should calf. If she gets pregnant or if she's not pregnant and gets pregnant this time, then we'll know country was a little upset when we took her but we'll bring her back over and then it takes a little while for the blood test results and we're gonna get ready to leave the homesteads we gotta make sure all the animals have plenty of feed and water look at this nice foggy morning this should be really good for starting to grow grass getting dew on all of the grass seeds that we put out will be perfect so yeah i am excited Lots to do today to get ready to leave the homestead. We're gonna be talking at the Homesteaders of New England event down in Southern New Hampshire country. We'll bring her back, don't worry. So we're gonna be leaving for a road trip, doing that talk. It's gonna be fun. It's always fun meeting like-minded people and meeting viewers. Right country? I know, you guys stay here though. Good morning, turkeys our future egg layers. I'll have to sit down and figure it out, but these egg layers should start laying soon. I don't remember exactly when we got them, so I'll have to look down. So I'll, oh, we got a turkey strutting his stuff. I'll have to sit down, figure out to see when we get them from McMurray Hatchery. They're actually gonna be at the Hone event this weekend. I can go talk with Tom and yeah, okay. I got off subject, but I can check to see how old our Red Star egg layers are and figure out when they should start laying, but it should be soon. I didn't do the blood test on Azalea this morning because I was thinking, you know what? Today would be like the 2021 20, day mark. So I'm going to wait till either tonight or tomorrow to do it. And then we'll pull her blood and check. She's back in with country right now. Uh, down over there. They seem to both be doing their own thing. We'll see. Right now we got to go down below. We got a round bale feeder for in the woods cows. We got to get that on the tractor, get it brought up here. Then we're gonna put the bale grabber on this tractor, get a round bale of hay, and we're gonna put the hay feeder in and a round bale of hay up there. I'll show you, they've been doing really good eating everything. And since we're not gonna be here tomorrow, I wanna make sure they have plenty of feed and don't try to get out of the fence looking for more delicious feed, so. Alright, since we already have the pallet forks on the 574, we're going to use that one to get the hay bale feeder, and then we'll put the bale clamp on this one. I'm not sure if we've shown this hay bale feeder or not, but we picked this up this summer. And put it out back here. All right, I learned the trick to getting the front attachments on. With this one, you can't see down here very good, but if you watch the handles lever, you can use these to guide where you are on your attachment. So the 574, you can see these arms when you look out. The way that this brace is set up on the 754, you can't look out the windshield and see your arms, but you can see the handles. 
So that's the way to do it. Oh, jeez. Watch out. I like what I do. It gets pressurized, so you gotta break the pressure seal. And you gotta relieve the pressure, or you can't put them in. They make a tool. So this is not gonna go on this pressure in the hose. I think what happens sometimes when your attachments sit out in the sun, like the pressure changes. So I can't push that in. I'm gonna go grab a ratchet and wrench. I'm gonna go grab two wrenches, break that free, and just break the pressure. And then I'll have to make sure that pressure is off. They make a tool, I'll have to order one that'll compress this, but I'm trying to do it by hand, I can't get it. So let me go grab some wrenches. So whenever you think, oh, I'll just do this quick, easy job, it's never how it goes. I feel nervous. Did you just hear that click? No. It just went. Oh, so we're trying to move out of the way in case it shot off or something. No, it doesn't shoot off. I'm just getting the pressure out of the threads. And then now, you see that spray? I saw that, yeah. So I'll have to order one of those. Kind of looks like a clamp for woodworking, the ones you go. Yeah. Instead of just having like a push end, it has an end that would sit here and then something that pushes on this. And then you can force it with your clamp. So I'll have to get one. One down. Two down. Okay. Now we're ready to go get a hay bale. I also just want to mention that Al still hasn't gotten a tractor with a buddy seat. So me or Brutus cannot go with him. So really, that's kind of a bummer. Or maybe it's a good thing because I probably don't want to be in the tractor with him. Brutus, do you want a buddy seat? You just hang out with me? Look at that mess you made in that barn. Yeah. All right, we're gonna leave the hay feeder here. We'll go get a bale of hay. We'll have both tractors up here. We'll feed the cows some hay, a couple flakes of hay down below. And then that way I can get in here and get everything set up for the first time. Cause like right now we got Reba waiting for us. So we'll feed them down below. And then that way we won't have to worry about them in the gate. Right Reba? They said, hey, what's that? Well, Country and Azalea are in the barn. They do need some privacy. I don't know. Who knows what happened last night either? It got dark out. You never know. All right, let's get the plastic off first before we pick it up. Looks like we got a hawk feather. There was those turkeys right here. All right, you guys have a good trick for opening up the round bales. Let me know if there's one way that's easier than another way. So the hay right now is not the prettiest on the outside because all the rain we got. But once you get in, the hay gets nicer. So this is just hay we have for now. And we do have fresh hay coming. So we're going to feed this stuff first. And then we'll use the newer for hay when we get it here. All right, that first bale of hay was a little bit wetter than we wanted it to be. So we're going to get this bale for them.
Come on, cows. I got some hay for you. Would you guys like some hay? We'll keep you entertained over here. And then I can go up above and get the feeder out. She look okay. Let's go get the hay bale feeder out and then later on we'll make sure we come down, fill up their water trough. And we want to fill up all of their mineral feeders with different minerals while they're all over here. Just trying to figure out the best way to place it. I think this is the right direction so that way I can come over it with my grapple and just open it and the arms won't be hitting. If I had it spun the other way when I was going to open my arms, it'd kind of hit this direction. All right, I want to cut all of the strings off over here and then we'll take the bad layer of hay off and we'll spread it around, let it compost, and we'll put the good bale in. You keeping an eye out? Um, I am and I'm hoping you are too to tell me to go. Hurry up, shut the gate. We got the hay up before they came up and we have some minerals we want to get into the feeder. We have a middle feeder up here and down there because sometimes it's hard for us to get in um, because we do have them trained to come see us um, every time we're around. They're all like right at the gate. So we try to make sure we have two different areas that we can make sure we get them. So we will put your bacon soda and then your beef mineral up here. So we've got bacon soda, we have a selenium salt lick, and then we get some other loose beef minerals we're gonna put out. We get some more of this one. This one is Redmond's beef mineral. They really like this one. So now we'll shut this gate, we'll go down below We'll fill up the other mineral feeder. I think I'm gonna go down and get that other hay bale that we didn't like, and I'm gonna drive down and put it in like where the trees are, and we can break it up, and that way we can just use for mulch so it won't go to waste. Well, the cows are coming. That didn't keep you distracted very long. You think we got treats for you? Right here we got seaweed. They have another salt lake over here. This one's Redmond's. It's got salt and garlic. And then I'm sticking in charcoal. You want some? You gonna test it out? I ain't got nothing good for you. It's just minerals. I know. So I put out seaweed and I put out a charcoal. And right now, Reba and Black Beauty are fighting over the seaweed. They love the kelp. I don't know why. And now right now Reba's in there getting some charcoal. Well, well, I'm waiting for Al. I have some empty buckets and the garden is, you know, to the end. So I'm just going to go through and we're going to be moving the pigs and they'll love some tomatoes that have been over ripened and what else I can find in the garden. I'll just fill up a couple of these pails and we'll get that to them when we move them. The strawberries are looking so good. That is one thing I like about having a homestead small farm is the food never goes to waste if we can't eat it the pigs will like it chickens will like it it all has a purpose so 
I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little discouraged with how the hay bales are kind of looking. I know we had feet of rain this year and that's why they look the way they do. So it's kind of out of our control. I mean, it is what it is. So I'm not gonna let the hay go to waste. I'm gonna go spread it out there in the pasture up where they've been eating. It'll add more carbon to some of the areas that they're turning into pasture. So it's not gonna go to waste. It's just kind of a bummer. We do have more hay coming this year, but yeah. I know the reason it's the way it is, is it's been a wet, wet year this year. So like I said, we've got feet of rain just this summer. It's nice to have a little bit of a dry spell. The cows have been doing a really good job coming in here, eating the good grass, eating a lot of the growing up trees, which has given them great minerals, and trampling down the stuff they don't want to eat. So it's going to be very interesting to see what this looks like come springtime. I'm enjoying driving around and seeing cow patties everywhere because that's what we want. They're fertilizing it. I'm thinking we're going to leave them in here for a while. I don't know if it'll be all winter or not, but we'll leave them in here for at least until we get into deep winter, I'm thinking. And that way they can trample this down better and they can just keep spreading their manure. And then if we have bad hay bales like this, I'll just keep putting them out. I'm gonna unravel that one a little bit. And then like this spot, it's a low spot and it's very poor soil. So we'll let that all get knocked down, rotted, composted, and then we'll have some good grass growing here next year. As discouraged I am about how wet this hay bale is, some decent hay in here still so they'll probably eat some of that i've also been seeing a lot of good seed heads in there and some good clover seed heads so this is all going to get spread around and it will make some good carbon to add to the soil and it'll give us some good seed heads to add so we'll have some good grass growing so nothing's going to go to waste man they're doing such a good job out here i can't wait to see what this looks like next spring when grass starts growing again Now it's time to move the pigs. Yukon, you're huge. I right, know. You're a big boy. Soon you can go on a date with sweet potato. We gotta wait. You ready? I brought him some tomatoes. He loves tomatoes. We should have named you Tom. Oh boy. Oh. Just like you got fresh sheets. How do you like that fresh grass? You want some tomatoes? My favorite. You love these. So good. Nice to juice. All right, so we'll start here. We'll go one, two, three, four. Then we'll go that way. Six, over, over. I'm gonna take this one up. And then we'll set it back down. Well, I think those were all successful moves today. 
you just never know. So you don't want to say anything too soon or drink yourself. But I feel like everything went smoothly and everybody looks happy. I found this really great, easy, instant pot beef stew recipe. I did it the other day and we decided we really liked it. So we were gonna take it with us on our road trip. All right, I have all my veggies, everything in there, my broth, all the things, spices. I just need to add a can of tomato sauce. I think that's what really makes it taste good. One can of tomato sauce. I'm gonna stir all together. All right, we gotta get the truck ready now to go on a road trip. And that means I wanna bring some tools. I hate to break down and get a flat tire or something like that and be like, man, I have all this stuff at my house to fix it. I just can't do it right now. So we'll grab the stuff that we need to like fix little things like a flat tire, change a spear, make it easy, that kind of stuff. So I don't know. I just like grabbing that when we're going on a decent little road trip because that wouldn't be any fun. All right, we'll bring some impact sock in. I think this fits in there, if I remember correctly. Yep. Take the battery off so it's not running the whole time we're driving. Bam. Ratchet. Wrenches. Grinder. Spare batteries. What else do I want? Probably forgetting something, but... That'll do. All right, we already got a bunch of bugs stuck on the windshield. And so I got a Scotch-Brite pad. I'm gonna take some glass cleaner, give everything a little light scrubbing. I don't know about you guys, but I really don't like looking through bug guts if I don't have to. I'm sure we will have lots on the ride back. So I'll actually keep the scotch Sprite in my door panel, so if we stop at a gas station and they're really bad, I can get them off. Thanks, Pops. Looks like we got them all. All right, it is a nice foggy morning to head out and hit the road. We got all of the animals taken care of, fed, watered. We should be good. We are back from the Hone event, Homesteaders of New England event that we did, that we went to yesterday. We had a great time. It was great weather. It's always awesome 
meeting like-minded people and viewers. We did a talk. The talk went great. It was hot. So it kind of threw me off. I was pretty warm. I was like dripping sweat. So if anybody get pictures afterwards, I'm sorry, because I was a sweaty, sweaty mess. But we had a blast. We didn't do a ton of videoing because we wanted to be present there and be able to connect and talk with everybody that was at the event. So not much video footage, not many pictures, because we were more focused on talking with people while we were there versus getting video footage. We'll be going back again next year. So if you guys are looking to come to a homesteading event in New England, come check it out. It was a blast. I'm out here checking on the cows, seeing how they're doing, because we want to bring country up here now. But I wanted to make sure the cows are up here doing good before we brought country up. I'm not going to go down there, but they're right there. This pasture is looking awesome. So yeah, if you guys were at the event, and we got to meet you. We had a great time. It was fun meeting everybody. I wish we had more time there. We got to meet Jess from Roots and Refuge. We've known her for a while, but we've never met her in person. I shouldn't say that. I got to meet her. Gina and Olivia did not. It was busy, busy, busy. So it was a great time. I'm glad we went. Looking forward to going next year. We're looking forward to get country up in the pasture. So let's go down below, get country. We'll bring him in here and introduce him to these ladies in miles. And these ladies will be going into heat soon. They're usually in heat like the week after Azalea. So look at this hay boy. You guys see how they started eating it. They're eating the center out. That's funny. All right, we got country all haltered up. We're gonna walk him up to go be in the woods. We got some more cows for you to go see. Oh. You smell all the other cows? Want some treats? One more, and then that's it. We'll leave this scoop up here so later we'll give you more. Okay? You're already loving life in the woods. The other cows are that way. I will say walking them up here went nice and easy, like I was hoping. We didn't bring him up here earlier because we wanted to make sure he bred Azalea. We're still not 100% sure, but she's been in with him twice. So she has 21 more days before she goes back into heat. If it didn't take this time, we have the three heifers up here that need to get bred. So we don't want to put it off any longer. He's super chill. So we're hoping that even being up here with the other cows, we can get to him easy if we need to bring him back down. I'm not worried about him, but it's going to be more of trying to get him separated from everybody else if we want to bring him back down. Worst case scenario, we'll have to build a lane and get them all down to the pasture where the pigs are, and then we can kind of let them go that way. We're gonna have to wait 21 more days to see if Azalea comes back into heat, and if she does, then we're gonna have to figure it out. I see you, Miles. Oh, there. There, he is right here. Like down in the trail. Okay. You're smelling them now, mister? They're down that way. You probably can't hear country but he's like brr, brr. he's talking to the other cows he's getting closer to them reminds me of kind of like the dinosaur sounds you'd hear on jurassic park so the ladies have spotted him and they've all kind of made eyes let's see what happens now so miles and country were born on the same farm and they're like one number off, so they were born within a few days of each other, so they know each other already. So it'll be interesting to see how they reunite. Oh, seems like nothing. They sniffed and that's it. Now the ladies are like, hmm, who's this in the house? What do you think, ladies? There's a new man in town.
What do you say, Reba? She's like, I'm gonna take a pee. Oh, they're all sniffing each other's bums like dogs would. So I guess they're getting to know each other. Seems like it's gonna be a very good introduction. So that is cool. When it cools off and we're back out here later, I'm sure they're gonna be up here by this feeder, all hanging out. We'll come give them some treats and see how they're doing. Reba. Oh. You wanna be the first one for treats, mister? That was super easy and it was easier than bringing up Reba because there was a lot more, I don't wanna say fighting going around, but there was a lot more figuring out who was the head of what when uh, we brought Reba up. I was just watching country, he's running through the woods, loving it. But yeah, it's going good. So this morning, I also just noticed this. I'm really happy. Look at all that grass. We have winter rye coming up and then we have all of our grass and clover starting to grow. You can really see it good down there, over there. So yeah, they're all at the water. So country knows where their water trough is now. I am encouraged to see this grass and winter rye doing this good. I'll keep an eye on the area down below and see when that starts sprouting. It's like a chia pet. 